Hey there, Crittermanders, it's Patrick here once more, inviting you back into the world of Cosmic Crit. And here on the podcast, where I get to play Starfinder weekly with my five friends. Uh, no introductions or announcements, I should say, this week. We here at Cosmic Crit have had some great days and had some pretty tiring days, maybe trying days uh, as of late. Uh, and recording's been difficult, and I just wanted to... Take the time to thank all of our fans for sticking with us, supporting us on Patreon, and interacting with us in the Discord. All that love and support goes a long way for me and the players on the show. So, thank you so much. Thanks for listening. And that's it. Let's get into it. Let's get back to the carnage of combat that is episode 160, which we are calling Ice 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 Gateway. Gateway. Episode commencing in 3, 2, 1. Episode initiated. It's time to pop your rat X, bring up vats, and shoot some irradiated mole rats on this week's episode of Cosmic Fallout 3. This is your GM, Patrick, your ghoulish mutant overlord lobbing atomic bombs at you in close quarters combat. Joining me in taking on raiders, rangers, and regulators are my five vault dwelling heroes and your player twos. To my right, she's full of perks, skills, and is the most special of specialists. It's Rebecca Rowan with Zinnia. Hello. Across from her, this brotherhood of steel encased soldiers bringing freedom back one bullet at a time. It's Drew Delivery Echo 7. War. War never changes. To my right, this super mutant has the heart of an irradiated ghoul. It's Tyler dredging up to Vasho. I'm drunk on Nuka Cola. Across from him, this lone wanderer appeared out of nowhere, summoning companions to their side. It's Shabert playing a stressed. Hey, hey, hey. And across the digital table, quicker than a mintad washed down with a cold bottle of Nuka Cola, it's Miles mixing it up with sprouts. Good evening. Oh, folks. Do you feel that? The weather, the weather is a changing outside. All I know is that the sun will rise, birds fly. And Miles will say good evening with his introduction. Good evening. These are yeah. just the facts of life. It's it's refreshing having someone goes last who doesn't just completely goober the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, for our listeners, it is a welcome change. <laughs> um, unless, well, unless, they, unless they, they want to know how I'm doing, pretty good. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's ye old November. And uh, I can't speak for the you Southern folks here on the podcast, but weather is changing, getting cold up here. And it seems just appropriate that you guys are all stuck on a giant frozen comet hurtling through the void. I'm sorry. Are you trying to steer toward a joke of it's fallout? Fallout. Uh, that's good. Because that's guy. what it sounded you know like to me. Yeah, that's, a mean, way better, that's way better than anything he had prepped. <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> Our new it might GM, be everybody fall out for you guys, but it's uh, it's straight up winter already for to Bert and I. Yeah, it's, it's, you and then skip you, straight to you get winter, to snow. Tyler. And- that's, right, that's right. There, there was like it was like a uh, three days of fall, and then it's, now it's now it's winter. In in the Pacific Northwest, our meteorologist has to give us uh, a twenty day notice of there even being the possibility of snow, so we can all absolutely have a meltdown. Uh, See, so it's not hard. just the Southern. south. Yeah, it's not just yeah. the south world listening to this. Oh God, you get so you get yeah, eat in Brazil about it. <laughs> <laughs> the so the Portland metro area does not do well with snow. However, the east side of the states or of Oregon, they do fine. Uh, huh. So it it depends on where you are in Oregon, but uh, very much I, I tease the metro area because notoriously awful at it. Do you guys have when it does get cold out? A go to warm up solution, uh, like you know, put on a pot of fresh coffee or don some fuzzy socks or something like that. Do you have a favorite blanket? Um, as far as a, a as a beverage, I do like. I mean, I like coffee anyway, but I do like when it gets cold. I do like making hot chocolate or variations of hot chocolate. There's just Ooh. something about the crispness of the weather and just that nice hot sweet drink that just I don't know. It just makes you feel good. It it it'd feel weird to have it in the summertime. Sure. I like apple cider. Hot apple. I cider. do. I, I like apple. I I love I love hot. hot 
fall and winter beverages anyway. So it's just more fun to drink them. I never had them, Rebecca, but coming up here to the north, people often have uh, hot toddies. Oh, yeah. I love a hot toddy. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Hot toddies are great. Make your throat feel better when you get sick. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've, I've made some up in the crock pot before as well. Very happy. Um, how they like, uh, hot toddy hold the tea. Mm. What's that? Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's typically I, I've got like some do like apple cider mix and stuff and in, inside uh, the toddy. Oh, nice. Yeah, hot apple cider is pretty darn good. Uh, what about you on the West Coast there, Tyler? Do you like being cold? I do like I. I do prefer being cold. That being said, when it gets too cold, uh, we have an electric blanket that I like to bring out and <laughs> our cats recognize it pretty readily. So they flocked, you know, I just turn it on usually low or one, maybe two. And uh, it brings the cats coming and then it's kind of a, a fur, a blanket and then a, a cuddly cat blanket <laughs> on top. And usually two we'll blankets. Up pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. Being a being a Massachusettsian by uh, adoption, uh, I don't have anything that I use to deal with the cold. I just sort of snuggle up next to my misery, and I just uh, radiate hate and negative energy, um, <laughs> and that keeps me warm enough until June gets here, and then I we get our one month of summer, I, and then then I shed it and I exude positivity until uh, August comes, and I I'm again what. into the cocoon. Yeah, I was under the blankets the other day, and everything was quite warm except my <laughs> nose felt like it was about to fall off my face. It was oh, so you, cold. You know the trick to that? You put underwear on your head. <laughs> I, I literally put my shirt up around my nose like I was. Try not to smell something nasty. I was like, "Oh, please warm up." No, I would be like, that, "That is the best part of mask life right now. When it gets cold, oh, yeah. you just got a little." Yeah, I don't think I'm getting rid of the mask in the <laughs> winter warm time. Friend, right there. I I have a buddy who uh who collects or has kept all of his old video games, and as soon as winter hits, usually it's what we we now call Black Friday. That morning, and he used to invite me over to do it. He would break out his uh his Sega Saturn and play the Christmas Nights. The, the day after Thanksgiving, <laughs> when, mm. as the holiday time started, it was, it was this tradition he had since he got the Christmas nights uh, was to always play it as soon as uh, winter hit. Oh, the holiday season is it's not here yet. We can't get too far ahead, but yes, well, well, we should revisit. Well, but it doesn't get that cold here usually until a little bit later. In November, I know you, so. <laughs> it's like December, basically <laughs> Black Friday. Uh, right. Um, let's Hold on. What day is this coming out? Yeah, I, I didn't know when this was coming out. So. Oh, great question. Uh, of course, we, we all know that today is November 9th. <gasps> Guess when? That's my birthday. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Rebecca. We're so good at this. <laughs> of course, we need that old day. Well, obviously, we record at least a week in advance because we put the episode out. But yes, in the, in the future, it's your birthday. Uh, everyone, listen. Make sure to bug her on Discord <laughs> or wherever you bug her on the social medias. Mm -hmm. Um, right. With that being said, let's dip our toes back into the cold, the dreary, and into a long dark hexscape that is this comet and talk to sprouts marlow about what happened last time on cosmic crit i swear on my sweet aunt petunia it feels good to be on the ground we came across this odd asteroid spinning complacently floating in the darkest space and we likely would have kept on flying but we picked up signs of what looked like a temple much of the rock seems to have been hollowed up so we thought it might be a good idea to investigate if there are any gods out there in the black, then you know how much I love investigating. We had the temple, which looked like to be under dedication to Hylax. Just can't seem to escape the shadow of this mook. Anyhow, the temple had an occupant. Candle rhyme. Few bolts short of a blaster, if you ask me. He kept wanting us to pray to him. And that just wasn't going to happen. So there we was, trying to suss things out. When this candlehead guy decides he's done convincing us to pray to him, he's going to make us. Well, <laughs> that went as well for him as could be expected. And after snuffing out that candle, we turned the temple upside down looking for clues. Nada. So we decided to check out the inside of the hollowed out rock. And that's when we heard the screeching coming from above. Indeedy. 
uh, oh. screeching, obviously, in some deep, dark language, just <laughs> uh, as you stumbled into this cave from out on the comet. Sprouts understands that language. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the voice screaming out says, get out! I'm gonna kill you! Uh, in Aqua. <sighs> But uh, yeah, it seems something else has taken up residence entirely in this cave. And this is the creature you see above you all. Those of you that are right underneath, I think, Trest and perhaps Echo 7 Sprouts. Here we go. Oh boy. Ah. Whoa. Doesn't seem mm. to care much about the void. <laughs> Just a thick torso with a bat like head, two leathery wings and arms, and then a long eel like tail. That looks familiar. Mm. Yes, Father. I shall become a bat. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This is the bat bat sprout origin story about yes this is where sprout gets his idea to become a vigilante once he's back on civilization (laughs) (laughs) uh we rolled initiative before we started playing tonight it's been a while since we've done that and first up as this thing is uh like i said remind you starting about 50 feet up on the side of the cliff this this huge creature uh first in the initiative turn order is zinnia can i try to identify this thing you can with mysticism or if you have your your kit to take a peek, you use something else for that, right? Yeah, life science, assuming it's living, unless it it's is. unliving. It's a magical beast. Hey, we know so where to 26. find it. Nope, 28. 28. I think that is just enough. And the xenobiology DC is negative five. <sighs> Um, so that'll be enough to identify it in two things. Uh, well, I, I don't think it's really like an alien creature. Uh, this is technically a magical beast. Well, we'll call it one thing. You know, this is a Shantak, um, a, a huge Eight. chaotic evil magical beast. How it got here, you're not sure, but you are sure you know at least one thing about it. What would you like to, to figure out? You said a Shantak? Shantak. Shantak. Okay. S H A N T A K. Um, does it have any resistances or immunities? Oh, you best believe it's got a sweet, sweet double immunity of diseases and cold. Is immune to what you're feeling this negative 10 degree weather out here. All right. Good to know. Good to know. Um, Zenia will relay that to the team. Um, and she is going to fly up just a bit, uh, take out her sonic pistol, and take a shot. Alrighty. How how much would you like to fly up? Uh, about how how high is the ceiling? Um, where you're at, maybe thirty feet or so. It is how high up is this thing? Uh, fifty feet from the the ground. So. Oh, okay. Uh, what's the range on your pistol? Um. It is 40. So I think you'll just have it if you want to get up about 30 feet. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, go up the 30 feet to get as close as I can um, and take a shot with it. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Because it's low gravity, I can fly up without using any squares. Without using any squares? Yeah, I looked that she up uh, the other day. Up. I can just fly straight up because it's low grav. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The low grav, but there is atmosphere, so your wings work. Yeah, so technically I could fly up as high as I wanted to, right? I could go up the full 50 feet if I if I really wanted to. But I will just go up the 30 feet if that will get me in range. Mm-hmm. Sound good? Uh, yeah. All right, the trick attack is a 16 or lower on the CR. Success. And the attack is a 24. Also success. So that is a total of 16 damage. All right. Two and two. It's been a while since one of your tricks has gone off, it feels like. But uh, <laughs> yes, tricked and hit uh, for a little bit of damage. It seems to notice that, I can tell you. And we are going on to our second operative in the turn order. Sprout Marlow. You're oh, right sister. underneath this beast. Not going to let me have a chat with him. Uh... Sprouts is going to take a shot at this screeching creature. 
uh, inspiring as he might be to Sprouts' future. Uh, and with his uh, pistol here, his Red Star Plasma pistol. Uh, oh, as a cool. CR 19 or lower and a natural 20. Oh, what was the oh. roll on this uh, trick attack dice? Were these like multiple 20s here? Ugh. It's so much. Uh, oh. So that's, again, a natural 20. Uh, well, I guess we'll, we'll count this. Uh, shout out to one of our Patreon subscribers. We're going to go with uh, Jordan L, who uh, oh, just started up with us over this summer. Thanks so much for backing us on the Patreon. Hopefully listen to Dead Men Roll No Crits. Uh, so double up to that damage. And yes. Oh, well, um, I guess you can also take a card if you want. Those are always an option. Yeah. Uh, and Rebecca, you did what with him? Uh, as far as your trick. But oh, that's a good point. Uh, I'll, I'll make him flat foot it. All right, then I'll make him off target. Excellent. The old one two operative combo. And uh, let's see. Now, does this double the damage that I do in total or just double the damage of the attack? The attack. So it, it, it's, it's oh. both of those. Yeah, it's both your trick attack damage and your attack. Damage. Okay, so oh, 19 right. trick attack damage and four regular damage. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you can roll that again where I can pull a card for you and we can figure out what's going on with the card. More than likely, it'll still be doubled, but... Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Energy. Uh, the target is off target and takes a minus five into healed on perception checks. That's pretty lame. So double up that damage and, uh, ooh, I think it's got some targets. <laughs> uh, so that's what, 19 times two. You, you can just roll it again if you want. Just, yeah, we'll full run, roll 46 maybe, or 48. Just, or no, just roll your uh, macro again. I've got oh. the 23, so. Okay. Damage part two, electric boogaloo. Uh, 10 on that one. And 20, well, it takes a trick of damage. So it's another oh, 23. Th- so oh, it's okay. it's also just doubling. <laughs> so it's 46 in total and adding that to the 16 wow. that Zinnia got. It's a lot. <laughs> does, it's not bloody. Does it How much get, is that total? 46, 46 and 16. I'll let you do the math. 46. But that is a crit, and you hear this thing shriek out in pain, scream down at you in Aklo. <laughs> what did I do to you? Uh, oh, no, Chris, I don't want to hear that noise at all. <laughs> Chris, we're <laughs> on to you. <laughs> um, I'm going to. I don't have too much to do at range, so I'm going to hold my turn until after that demon creature goes. Okay, drop you down while well, you're not going to have to wait very long because he's going next. Shantak coming down to right above our good pals Echo 7 and uh, Sprouts Marlow. Sprouts Marlow, it is go time. A talon is coming down at you. Um, I guess it doesn't have to fly down too far. It's got a 15 foot reach, so comes down about 25 feet and is about 15 feet off the ground here and yeah it's gonna come out with a talon for sprouts Mm -hmm. no thank you a 15 on the dice that is a hit and that is a leave an automatic grab here as you are clutched in this thing's talons oh, no. grabbed by it uh, just so ah! we, can, we can go off together and, and, and live happily ever after. Uh, first let me roll some damage. Uh, that is 22 points of damage. Slashing. Ow. Ouch. Ooh, but that is its entire turn. So I had to move down to get to you. Trest all right, Thank you. I'm activating that jet pack, or jet pack, and I am pulling out my sword and flying up to chop him. Okay. Oh, big chop! So this, uh, I, I have will, a qu- uh, This uh, will provoke moving into range. All yet. right, you're all good right. with that. Yeah. It's flat footed, so. Oh no! It is flat footed. How uh, do I forget this every uh, time? Can, what Jerba- you got, Drew? Uh, so if it's 15 feet off the ground, if Jabert got on the other side, can, technically I am armed because of my power armor, would that count as flanking? 
Nope, because you were underneath it, you'd have to get on top of it in order for yeah. that to work. It's yeah, it would be a lot of movement to get over there. And so, yeah, but no, no attack of opportunity because it is it is off target twice and flat footed. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, uh, twenty one versus its flat footed KAC. That is a hit. All right, twenty two chop. Just because of the flat footed. Oh boy, twenty two points of damage. Uh, it is now bloodied, as you see, it's uh, what looks like battery acid blood dripping out from the, its wounds. Yee. Echo 7, you are right underneath this thing. No chance it can attack you if you want to make that ranged attack on him. Ah, I wanted to punch it, but it's a little too tall. Um, yeah. Well, not tall, but high up in the air. Uh, so, And it's a resistant to cold. Again, because who brings a cold weapon to a <laughs> ice oh, comet? It's an ice comet. Just real happy with the way that the world is going right now. So I'm going to shoot at it with the azimuth artillery laser. And uh, uh, I didn't have it pulled out, so I guess I have to do that and then uh, sure. do it. So no heavy fire. Oh. That's, a, cool, that's a 31 to hit. 18 on the dice. Yeah, hit. Uh, for 13 points of damage. And yeah, it's still up, but uh, four huge wounds on this thing. Everyone's taking a lick of the Shantak. Uh, Devasho, bottom of the turn order, onto you. What would you yeah, like to Patrick, do? Yeah, Patrick, remind me how this works. So I'm 12 feet tall and I have a 10 foot reach, which would, I would say, be able to hit it. Yeah, you, you occupy a 10 foot uh, cube and you have a 10 foot reach, so you can move right underneath it and tack up. That's what we're going to do. Try. Get try to against up. your EAC. Go uh, on 25 to hit. The warrior talon. Yeah. Uh, that is a hit. 17 points of damage. Ooh, is that minimum damage? Sure, close to. Uh, close close to. to. Not not minimum. 17. Oh, boy. It's still up when we go to turn two with Zinnia. I just have to say, that was quite a round. There was not a miss among us, right? Over 100 damage here. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> Good job, yeah. gang. Uh, Zinnia is going to Stop uh, take it, another shot. <laughs> this was supposed to be the entire episode, and you guys are blowing it. <laughs> <laughs> You're blowing it. No, go, go right ahead. All right, she is still 30 feet up, um, so she's got the high ground. Yeah, you're I within suppose. range. Yeah. High air. Anakin. The last. All right, uh, CR 17 or lower on the trick attack and 21 on the attack. Hit. Tricked and hit. Awesome. So that does, let's see, 21 damage. And that is going to be enough to knock this thing from the sky. and it. Wow. Falls to the cave ground, just clattering on top of Echo Seven and our good buddy Devasho here. Uh, Can I catch Sprouts? Sprouts, <laughs> Sprout, make a reflex save for Sprouts. Yeah, Let's see who catches him. Uh, between do two. we need to do an acrobatics or athletics check to catch him? Uh, reflex. Oh, just re- just a simple reflex. That's twenty four. Yeah, that's more than enough. He plop him in your hand uh, as, as he's coming down. It only drops about 10 feet or so here before you can cushion that that important football and we're I, out of combat. I catch him I straighten his hat and I put him on my shoulder. Um, um, how bad are you, how bad are you uh, hurt their sprouts? Sprouts took some damage so he could use some some SP. You need you need a little oh SP right. I forget. <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. You want to take a <laughs> You want to take a 10 minute Mystic uh, Cure is yeah. great. Another, <laughs> yeah, another, another a, weird episode where Sprouts is the only one to take damage the entire fight. Yeah. Oh, I'm but sorry you guys, guys don't take any. Yeah, I'm sorry exactly. you guys didn't do like a third of its hit points in a single attack. Well, you know, I can't help that. I can't help how <laughs> awesome so Sprouts is. That's just it's a, it's a fact of Sprouts. You know, I find it funny that the creature, like, you know, that we weren't able to talk to it. This is one of the few creatures in Starfinder that you can actually ride. I don't want to hear this based off the conversation we had earlier. <laughs> I know you can actually. I want. I was all on team talk to this thing. Yeah, you can. You can um, convince these things to let you ride them. They're they're dangerous to do so. Um, you can also. There's a level. You're not making item. my anger go down at all. 
There's a level 13 <laughs> item that actually lets you summon one of these things and then try to convince it to <laughs> to, to ride it. So, I mean, it's still a chaotic I, evil creature. I could have had a but. bat. <laughs> yeah, this thing is is awful. Uh, I wouldn't it, want to get on this awful. thing's back. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I, I do love the description of its voice uh, in from the Alien Archive 2, which is uh, it speaks in a shrill voice that sounds like glass grinding against stone, Oof. which I just thought was very yeah. That's what uh, I cool. That's what I've uh, embodied here in my my role play. Uh, it, it says it can its languages is Aklo. I, I think that's more. It can kind of like understand it. I don't think this thing is like talking like, "Hey guys, what's up?" <laughs> it's, it's not super intelligent. Uh, right, we're out of combat. Um, Sprout's going to take a, a little ten minute r- RP rest. The rest of you, you can take the time to search around this cave. Not a lot here, unfortunately. Um, definitely nothing in the way of what would look like an entrance to some kind of secret temple. Um. Is there anything in here? Nope, just the body of this Shantak. Looks like. Can I take a sample of the Shantak? Sample away. <laughs> that oh, I imagine. Put in the freezer in the in the ship. We need some meats. I imagine Make you guys some, might some want to. Uh, I mean, you can leave it here, and it's going to be fine. <laughs> like it's that's negative that's ten degrees. <laughs> if that's true. Uh, yeah, it it didn't seem to be affected by the the cold temperature, but now that its body is dead, it is stiffening up. I, I don't know. It doesn't for, sound very healthy to eat magical beast. You know, like there, there may be fortitude saves involved. You never know. Yeah, you might pay for it down the line. I mean, that you say that, but there are a few barbecue places in South Carolina where I've had to make some fortitude saves. <laughs> it's not as bad as it <laughs> that, sounds. That's very true. <laughs> and it was magical. And it was also what, magical meat. <laughs> one of my earlier memories of playing Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 like 20 years ago was uh, we had killed like a very young dragon in, in this cave and uh, everyone was very excited to rest and like make camp here and people were like, do we do we eat the dragon? <laughs> the the GM was like, sure, but make me a fortitude save. <laughs> no. Dragon meat, I imagine, would be pretty pretty much a uh, bad time. <laughs> in oh, your, I've had gators, so I mean... Sure. Yeah, that's the same thing. <laughs> magical dragon. Evil dragon. Dragon's just a magical gator. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You see that wingless dragon over there? <laughs> I'm gonna rat it. <laughs> All right, so you've you have cleared the Shantak cave. Pretty pretty sure. Uh, let's get back out there exploring the comet. Uh, who's gonna make me the the who's got the highest survival? Um, probably either me or uh, Zinnia. Thirteen oh, over here at sixteen. Right. Uh, so. <laughs> Let's see. Sprouts, go ahead and roll it. I, I still think we're in territory where it's not 25. Not possible to find this thing just out stumbling around. That is going to be enough to bring us to this next area about an hour or so later. Find a jagged set of mountains stretching above a field of what looks like untouched snow and ice that's kind of formed like little... Um, like small dunes that almost look like waves cresting the uh, the ground here. Uh, it is very thin air here. Um, I, I forget if Devasha, you have your your suit's environmental protection on, or if you're able to experience the the crispness. Uh, he can experience the crispness crispness yeah. for a while. Yeah. Yeah, okay, just tasting the the cold air up here. Uh, why don't you and everyone else make me a perception check? <laughs> Ooh, look at these rolls, uh, Rebecca. We know for a fact it's at the very least dim here, so that the, your roll does not include your plus two bonus normally. It right? does not. So that's a thirty six then. The DC 35. You notice that there's like little undulations in some of these waves of snow. You're pretty sure that the area ahead is um, potentially unstable ground. Big Um, snow. Oh, yeah. Make me a anyone can make a survival check. 
Okie dokie. That's a 31 for Sprouts. Yeah. Aha, 32. Nice. Yeah, no, you like move forward Sprouts and your elf fan maybe like touches this and st- straight up the ground here kind of wiggles like a waterbed and you can start feeling around the edges of it. This is not quick snow. It is sink snow. Very, very dangerous um, snowy condition where if you guys had walked straight out in the center here, you know, it's uh, it's not a drowning fear. It's a getting frozen solid under hundreds and hundreds of pounds of ice and, and snow. I just love that Sprouts, it, 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 for being such a city dweller, mm. is still super keen on, on the outdoor knowledge. Yeah, that's all you need. It's almost it was, like uh, operatives it, have a bloated dirty. amount. Of well, skills. I mean, it's, and, uh, it's just that it's just that it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's almost that it's almost like the number of skill ranks they get sort of makes the choices they make about their characterization a little meaningless. Well, no, yeah. I mean, it's, just, it's Sprouts knows his pair necessities, and that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw that plant <laughs> pun, Miles. You can't, you can't get up. Get me. <laughs> <sighs> that's bad oh i had to i had to i've been sending out that for a while that's worse than the joke from that we had to edit out of the show that tyler made a couple weeks already, ago. already i am it was not because mine as a gm i'm talking about drill uh as gm i'm just sweating my boots over here because i had this these two encounters for this entire episode and we're about 20 minutes in so oh no uh, <laughs> another shantag attacks you uh, <laughs> it's two shantag what that's crazy uh, well and the, uh, this is the weird thing weather. about our this is the weird thing about our sessions is sometimes you'll have set up enough for us to do for an episode and then we will stumble on the simplest fleam oh, yeah. you can possibly have. <laughs> no, I, I, I obviously I'm ready to rock and roll uh, through here. Give me another survival check to continue on because you can bypass this patch of sink snow with no problems. No one's getting That's accidentally it. sucked underneath. <laughs> It's just them pair necessities. You guys remember that episode in season one where we were supposed to question people at the bar and we had no idea what to do? All right, what'd you get here, Miles? Coach that 34. Girl? Was good 34 is so close, but so far as uh, you don't find what looks to be the, the entrance here, but you do come across another... Uh, unique feature to the comet, a huge rocky crevasse opening up into the ground. Uh, the floor of the expanse is a huge field of ice so perfectly formed it seems almost artificial, mirror-like. You can see yourselves down in the the ice beneath you. Um, and perhaps the most amazing thing is it's there it's free of snow drifts there doesn't seem to be any rocks or debris here it's just like a almost like a preserved ice skating rink um, uh, well we're gonna break out into some uh some winter olympics while we have mm-hmm. a, a chance it is definitely glory yeah anybody little, bring your hover boots it's a little slippery here, I will say, as you, you start off across the ice and do one dance and one dance only. Zinni, I imagine you can fly, but um, the, the the rock walls of the crevasse looks like they'd be pretty difficult to climb up. Um, and uh, uh, slippery is not too bad in, in Starfinder. The DC of things like tumble checks is increased. Um and you know, running across the ice is a little difficult as well. You might fall, fall on the flat of your back. Um, but as you guys are marching forward here, the ice begins to shake a little bit, and you see some well, almost like ripples in the the ice sheet forming. And I'm going to take us to the map as uh, shooting up from underneath this perfect ice flow is a creature made entirely out of ice. Uh, The same cool blue ice that you see here. And I'm going to take us to the map. Drew, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this might be a meat to cold too. (laughs) Oh, no, no. Definitely use your best cold weapon. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, That's cold at, weapon. Look at Rocky over here. He's like, hey, yeah. I'm a cool house. That's a more of uh, Arnold. That's, you can't get it out of your system. <laughs> so like a huge uh, icy creature has 
uh, popped up on you guys. Let's go ahead and make uh, make some initiative rolls as it it seems to stomp and crack the glass like ice beneath it. Was hoof like uh, ice appendages and seems oh, ready to come your man. way. <laughs> Natural toot for a Devacho. You just you warm up that uh, oh, bottom of the turn order dude, for me. Next season, I am I am playing a character that has more points and in initiative than any character has ever had. Uh, so natural twenty for Sprouts. <laughs> Oh boy, Miles can't keep you Miles down. Miles rolling rocks tonight. Just straight. Uh, you, 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 no, no, we're not doing this. We're not, we're not jinxing this. Uh, Patrick's right rocks. behind me. <laughs> so good. Hot rocks. Blessed by the gods. These rocks are on fire. These rocks are on fire. Okay. And did I roll? I rolled. I rolled very well as well, but not a, a natural twenty. Uh, Sprouts Marlowe, you're first in the turn order here. Okay, so there's a there, there's a ice monster coming towards us. Your home. Um, can I roll mysticism to figure out some things about figure this, out some uh, things? Yeah, big bad boy. Uh, that's a fourteen. Oh, well, unfortunately, no. That's no. okay. No. Well, anything there? I'm gonna, I'm gonna still try to trick attack and hit him with my, well, 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 my red star plasma pistol. And here we go. Well, CR 15 or lower. Ooh, tricked. But only 16 on the attack. Oh, oh, missed. Yeah. Oh, no. Man, because that, that trick attack damage, you got so lucky. <laughs> here we go. Here we yeah. go. Yes, it's going to happen. I'm going to get some attacks off. Uh, yes, a miss as it begins stomping across the the ice flow here and is going to get within range of just about everybody. Um Moving okay. straight up to Trest, and I'm gonna I'll roll randomly see so who he's gonna attack. He's got five targets. Moving down the initiative turn order. Ooh, it's going for a Sprouse Marlow. We shot rude. it first. It maybe it felt the Tyler plasma bolt in it. <laughs> Tyler, <laughs> take you looking on. directly at you. I'm sorry, oh, Patrick. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm burning holes in someone's eyes. <laughs> slam, slam a jamma, slam attack coming at poor little sprouts. Okay, only an eight on the the attack, but he's only making ones, and that is going to be a hit. Of course it is. Why don't you go ahead and make me a fortitude save? No, that's my worst one. Uh, that's ten. Okay, you have you have failed uh, an ability called Numbing Cold. I have rolled nearly minimum damage on the attack, though, so good news is you're only taking 19 points of bludgeoning and cold damage. The bad news is you are staggered for the round after getting hit with that slam attack. So Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, staggered would be a stunning effect, right? Oh, yeah. Wait, no. Staggered is not stunned. Um, let's see. You, I have Rexley. Oh, some plus plus two ability. would not even matter, right? This, the fourth save is probably too high. Uh, you rolled a ten. Yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. Wait, is that a Rexley uh, ability? Or- Rexley gain a plus two racial bonus to saving throws against mind affecting effects, paralysis, poison, polymorph, sleep, and stunning effects, unless the effect specifies as effective against plants. Yeah, this is not stunning, unfortunately. Okay. That's, that's fine. I was just, I, I'm hoping at one point my, my feel, plant, my plant like. <laughs> well, I feel like uh, cold is like the one thing that would work against plants. <laughs> Freeze you out for winter, but it is moved within melee range for a lot of people, and, including. I'm sorry. What was the damage? Uh, 19. 19? Okay. Yeah. Half bludgeoning, half cold. Don't think that'll matter for you, but yeah. Nearly minimum. Tress, you're next up in the initiative turn order here. Uh, I'm gonna spend a second level spell and I boost up my magical sword, my magic sword, and I'm gonna slash hmm. with ruthless efficiency. All right, you just see the blade just humming along. Uh, twenty-five Ooh. to hit. Oh, that's a hit. Oh, minimum, absolute minimum, absolute damage. minimum. <laughs> wow, absolute minimum, bargain basement minimum. 
17 points of damage. Uh, just slashing damage, right? Yeah, just slashing. Ooh, unfortunately, you, you're, you look like you're coming up against some DR here for this first attack. And it's, uh, you're just chipping away at what feels like a rock wall. Mm. A little, oh, thankfully, a little tougher than that Shantak. <laughs> Gave you guys a, a hopefully a level appropriate combat. Well, um, thank, thank goodness for that. <laughs> mm. uh, Zinnia, next in the turn order. Uh, do I know what this thing is? I think you have an inkling. It uh, This is an elemental of uh, of some sort and we've discussed on the podcast that they are living creatures though this would be uh, typically a mysticism check to figure out exactly what kind but with my bio lab it's life science correct so you're making a roll Ouch. nope that's a natural one Ouch. oh oh that really you hurts got you. it out of the way yeah. you got it out of the way but yeah at attack, least it wasn't on my attack, attack roll. roll yeah your attack <laughs> roll is gonna look real good <laughs> All right. Um, what would you like to do? So, uh, I I was really hoping to find out what kind of damage resistance it had. Well, we know it's probably immune to cold, and we also know that it has DR to um, probably all physical damage. So, um, but there well, are very here's few what things- I'm thinking. I. I could use a an inhibitor to reduce its DR by five. I just don't know whether that would do a whole lot of good or not. It probably has DR ten, so you would cut it in half. Um, that might be worthwhile, right? I mean, it would help. It, it, of... it won't affect me, but it will help trust. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, it's it's good. I mean, regardless, it's it's good. I'll do that. I'm going to pull up my needler pistol. Um, I'm up in the air a little bit um, and take a shot at it to uh, try to deal that inhibitor. Sure. Ignore the trick attack on this. Um, oh, that's only a 13 on the attack. Ooh, but I don't think that's going to work. That's a miss. <sighs> Unfortunately, oh, a couple I misses. Uh, All right. I'm sorry. Are, are you indeed flying up in the air? Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I just am above the the ice because I was oh. flying about the ice, right? So you you want to stay in position? Yeah, yeah. Then we're I imagine to... I'm like ten feet off the ground, probably. Uh, yeah, Echo Seven is next in the turn order. All right, Echo Seven. Uh, this thing is flat footed, right? Oh no! Oh, Not at nobody all. got nobody got their trick off. Oh. Attack! Well, that's a that's the, terrible. The exact opposite of last combat, and we love it oh. here, folks. Well, that's no good. Uh, then I'm going to redo what I thought I was going to do. Uh, I'm just going to shoot it. Uh, that's what I'm going to do with, with the azimuth artillery laser. You know, that wonderful level one uh, weapon that I have. Uh, but right. we're going to do heavy fire. It's going to make its attack of opportunity. Try and smush you into the ice. Oh, because it's got Here. a 10 foot reach. Oh, it's got more than that, buddy. Boy. <laughs> Oh, but I rolled a three on the dice. What is your KAC? Uh, my KAC is 24. Okay, it's going through with some damage. And mobility doesn't affect that, does not Not unless you are... The, the movement is the provoking action. Yeah. yeah. Make me a fortitude save. You're going to want to make this before this attack goes off. Oh, no. Oh. No heavy fire for you. Natural one. Yeah, that staggers you, unfortunately, with this provoked attack. Uh, a little more damage this time. Uh, 27 points of damage. And the staggered condition means, yes, you can make a... Um, uh, actually, we'll call this staggered for the, the next round because you've already kind of declared a full action. Um uh, for next round, you'll be staggered. Uh, how much damage are you doing here? Uh, it's a 21 to hit. Okay, well. Does that hit? I'm assuming that you said that. So Never mind. That is yeah. a mess. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't see the attack dice number. Uh, yikes. So you're taking some damage. Staggered. Sprouts. Marlo. Staggered. Devasho. We need some W's here for Team Midnight Squad. I'm going to move around behind it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try to stab it with acid. Hopefully, it's 
doesn't like that. I think that's about... I'm going to go to Photon Attunement, and I'm going to try to identify it with mysticism. Mysticism, please. Because I have that. 16 on the dice for a 26. 26. It's not enough. All right. You're pretty sure, along with Zinnia, a ice elemental of some kind, what exactly its abilities are, you are unsure. Okay. Making an attack? Yes. And, ooh, a 26 should get you. Oh, that'll do. That's a hit. (laughs) I cannot roll good damage today. I rolled a one and a two on the dice for damage. 16 acid. Uh, oh, acid, yes. So it's taking all that damage, uh, all that acid damage, and it indeed has a new target because you've done the most damage to him. Uh, but we'll see if that uh, follows up. That was turn one, and already should just loaded this comet with these things instead of Shantax. <laughs> Sprouts Marlow, you are staggered on your turn here. On Echo 7's back, what do you want to do? Okay. Uh, so, move or um, standard to move her a standard uh, that I'm going to use my standard and attack. Taking a shot. Oh, yeah. Go right ahead. Oh, no. Wow, dude. Oh, remember this, when? This, this <laughs> is remember when? Miles, when remember Miles when you jinxed it this time? You jinxed it this, time. jinxed it this time. This isn't on me. This is natural. Sometimes we just start fleeing encounters and they go on forever. <laughs> yeah. Remember when Tyler cursed you all this combat? <laughs> what? Tyler, no, I, it was Miles. I, look, it wasn't I me. love you. I love you like your family, but I swear to Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I will end you, sir. Uh, uh, this is indeed a critical fumble. Uh, would you like the official Pineso deck or our own homegrown fan generated? Uh, crit- as deck? in all things in, in actual role play, I prefer Cosmic Crit. I'm glad I got the... <laughs> deck out okay rolling on our website cosmiccrit.com forward slash critical dash fail dash deck what is this a ranged attack oh i don't know if i've seen this one submitted by caro cogitatus don't it's called that. <laughs> neutrino burst overload your weapon overpowers causing double damage but the recoil throws off your aim make a second attack roll at a random target allies enemies and yourself uh, included what wow double damage so uh, he's going to make an attack and a critter natural hits, one is ignored deal. on the second yeah he's going to deal double damage so first off it's random against everyone here so do i need to roll on who it's against yeah, yeah. so roll me a d6 we're going to go down the turn order you want you really want a two, oh. but what you got was shooting Zinnia out oh, of the no. sky. <laughs> Potentially. Uh, make a second attack roll. We're ignoring ones and twenties on this this attack roll. It's a 16, so. All right. Is that a miss against your EAC? Uh, yes. Yeah. My EAC is 20. Yeah. Well, you've just rolled crummy all over the place. I should have taken that roll for you. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm messing up as a GM. I would have rolled. <laughs> think 11 on the dice much better uh let's go on <sighs> yikes that's that's your entire turn uh we're going on to the giant elemental here this ice elemental is i think it's gonna try and take out a devasho we're gonna do a couple of attacks tyler are you ready uh i mean i've already deleted all my stamina and health so yes i'm ready <laughs> all right good good man <laughs> okay I've rolled a 15 and 11. My lower attack here is a 29. So two hits. Two. Yep. Uh, 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 eats. 54 points of cold slash bludgeoning damage. Does that indeed take away your your SP? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the good news is HP? I actually have... Uh, yeah, you have some yeah. cold um, reduction. I have. So. Well, I I can give myself some cold reduction, so I will oh. do that on my turn. Oh, this is something you have to activate. It's something I have to activate. Yeah. So. Oakley, Oakley. Um, you will. Let's see. Uh, you need to make two fortitude saves. 
against its numbing cold effect here. I'll, I'll get to oh, break it to you guys. The DC here is 16. Uh, well, yeah, I get a bonus to this, but I'm still failing because it's not that big of a bonus. And a natural <sighs> one. Staggered for your next round. Uh, Trest, we are on to you. You've got mm. nearly a flanking ally in Devasha, but for how long? Yes, that's true. Um, are, you, are you sure you want to move 10 feet? Because it has an attack of opportunity. I I, I see that, and I know that my, uh, my companions around me are uh, struggling to contend with those. So uh, I'm going to move uh, 10 feet uh, sort of to my left. Um, so I am sort of flanking with uh, Devasho. But you want to purposefully deflect some... Yeah. Aggro, uh, take this attack of opportunity on this. Yeah, turn. I can see that. I can see that the cold is getting to uh, Echo uh, Echo Six's uh, sur- or sorry, Echo Seven surveys, mm. <laughs> servos, and uh, slowing him down a little bit. So I'm gonna. His, his surveys are very slow as his, well. His surveys he's are also not getting slow. back in time at all. He's missing <laughs> out on the warranty, the rebates. He's not, he's not gonna get that iPad. What? I'm telling you. Do you have any um, mobility or anything like that? What, what am I hitting? Oh, no, trying I to hit for your nothing. KAC. Yeah. All right, let's just see if I can get a good old good old roll here. Oh, Seventeen yeah. on the dice is going to be hits. Every okay. elemental we have ever fought has been the hardest fight. Just just beat the snot out the of us. The water so. elemental in season one. Uh, remember that? Oh, uh, I, oh, I remember that. Two? Twenty-nine no, points two. of uh, yeah. twenty-nine one. points of damage. That is cold and bludgeoning, and I need you to make me a fortitude save. These have been pretty bad for, for you yeah, folks. No one's so passed far. it. No, no successes. That trend will continue. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, once again, we'll, we'll call this on the the prior or your next turn. You'll be staggered, okay. uh, so you still have an action here. Oh, lucky me! Oh, a 28. Uh, to hit is a hit, of course. Oh, 22 points of slicing, slashing damage. Okay, yeah. A lot of that is getting through its DR. Is indeed you're, you, you're finding a way to shave this ice into a snow cone. Uh, it has taken a good amount of damage, but not enough to knock this guy on its back. Zinnia, we are on to you. Back to you. You almost got blasted by <laughs> Sprouts Marlow, but you're too quick. Dodge right out of the way. Yeah, and uh, Zinnia is going to fly up away and back a little bit to get out of the sort of <laughs> danger zone sphere of this thing. Well, when all four of these um, guys go down, you're going to have to take pot shots at this thing. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, and she is going to raise her regular pis- pistol, her sonic pistol, uh, not wasting another turn on the Needler pistol. And uh, it's going to take a shot. All right, go right ahead. Tell you what would really be useful is some off target and or uh, flat footed. So I don't think the trick is going to go off. I do get a plus two for dim. Uh, nope. So that would be a CR four. Not but, enough. Yeah. Oh, this is a beefy. Uh, but the attack yeah. is a twenty six. That's it. All right, so that does 10 damage. Oh, well, okay. That all goes through. Sonic damage. And that brings us back to Echo 7, who indeed, no attacks coming your way this this turn. Drew, what do you want to do? All right, so I, I've got a uh, quick draw, so I can draw weapons as a swift action, which according mm-hmm. to the staggered condition, I can still do. So I'm going to pull out a Mark II frag grenade, and I'm going to throw it right here. A few, few spots to the east of this dude, so that I can hit it and not my buddies. Sure, go right ahead and make that ranged attack. <laughs> uh, oh, that was a thrown attack. I'm sorry. Yep, that's mm-hmm. what you've rolled here. Then yeah, that you, is you rolled a uh, three. Don't roll a one, and you basically have success oh, yeah. on these. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forget how much we're better. At, we're at. outside of the first bracket here, I think, for range, but that is still enough. Uh, what is the reflex for this? And what grenade is it? Uh, it's a Mark II frag grenade, and I wish I had looked up the reflex, uh, but it's 2d6, and it's a 15-foot range. Okay, well, I'll, I'll roll d20 and see what comes up. So it has made the DC because I've rolled a 16 on the dice, I can tell you that. Uh, so half damage, what is 
Uh, it's just 2d6? Just 2d6. Grenades okay. are the worst. Yeah, I, I, I thought you might have had some kind of fire grenade or something. No. Uh, it's uh, 10 points of damage. Okay. So um, half. Unfortunately, Zero. yeah, it's it's getting eaten up by its damage resistance. Yeah. Uh, let's let's circle back to this next round. We'll see you then, Drew. Um, Devasho really needs some big numbers. From you. I can't. I'm staggered. I'm going to set oh. myself on fire. Oh, okay. That's so turn. that that's a move action to to enact. No, that's a standard bull. Oh, wow. Okay. And anyone that is within, what, base space contact with you, uh, taking some yeah. damage? Yeah. Oakley Doakley, turn three, Sprouts Marlow, back to you, no longer staggered. All right, I'm going to take a shot at this, this guy. Get some trick attacks going off. <laughs> you guys are rolling like gods from above. Okay, with the all right. <laughs> Here so it's a CR 14 or lower, so it Tricks. is flat-footed. Oh, needed that. And it's 26 on the attack. That is a hit. All right. For 25 points of damage. All right. And that fire is doing a little bit more here. So about half of that is fire. Okay. I, I've done the math and ouch. That that was a big hit. That was almost as much damage as, as it's taken so far. That's what I like to hear. DRs. Oh, I don't like that at all. Oh, all praise that. Sprouts and his fire gun. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Uh, it is bloodied after <laughs> after that attack, which means oh, you know what's happening. <laughs> we're going uh, we're going to attack Sprouts with at least one of these melee hits, and uh, I think the other one. I think the other one Trest. I think you might have done the second amount of damage. Well, roll randomly. Let's see if it's Trest or Devasho. Devasho! Okay, so first attack versus Sprout. Second verse is Devasho. Can I roll? Ooh, no 20s for me. But a 10 and a 14. Uh, both hits. And can you both make me some fortitude saves? Sure. Ugh. 11. Oh, another fail. Another fail from Sprouts. What you got, Tavasho? Uh, I don't. Hey. 17. Success. Okay. Uh, 24 points of damage, Sprouts. 25, Devasho. And half of that is. Half cold, half bludgeoning. Uh, that's its entire. Is it 22 for me? Uh, 24. 24. One second, Patrick. <laughs> yeah holding pattern because when you hit me when I'm on fire uh, take some damage you yeah you're gonna take 2d6 fire damage so I'm gonna roll that for you oh no uh, seven points of fire okay it's taken more than that which means it don't like that one bit <laughs> you guys have discovered this ice elementals somewhat weakness yeah right doesn't like the fire at all um that is its turn. Uh, Trust, we are back to you. Flanking with Devosh. Just occurred to me, I'd never tried to identify this thing, so I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah. Mysticism. Yeah. Yeah, mysticism. 27? Oh, it's so close. It's so close. <laughs> you did one better than me, so maybe? Yeah. It's 28 to identify. Oh, oh good I, Lord. I, I, no. Uh, you shouldn't have done too well against that Shantag because I sent a CR9 creature <laughs> after you. Okay, sorry, guys. Let's go, go on. All right. Here does oh. the attack. I can tell you, outside of game, this is a greater ice elemental. I was like, they're going to knock this thing on his booty. Uh, 21 to hit. Maybe not. That is a miss. Yep. I have to actually have to roll pretty well against this Oh, no. Thing. It's... It's uh, flat-footed, right? Oh, it's flat-footed. That is a hit. Oh, yes. Hey. Oh, uh, 19 that. damage. Okay. Oh, oh, we've, we might have crossed into triple digits here. I cannot tell. Uh, math will tell. Okay, it's it's definitely not looking too good as you've cut off huge ice sculpture size pieces of granite-like uh, ice and snow off of its backside. I'm going to have to sharpen this thing up oh. when I'm done. Uh, Zinnia, we are back to you. Uh, is is trying its best to just take out all of your comrades here on the lake bed. 
I am going to keep taking shots <laughs> from my cushy place in the sky. <laughs> oh my gosh, this trick is never going to go off. Um, <laughs> no. so that's a CR4 on the trick, so that's not going to work. And the attack <sighs> is a 14. You've rolled a 3 and a Ugh. 4 on these 2d20. Wow. The worst. Echo 7! True. Yeah, we're going to go back to basics. We're going to shoot this thing with the azimuth uh, artillery Thank laser. You. Yes, please fire damage. Smart. Yeah. And, we, and we are no longer uh, staggered, so we're going to use heavy fire. Ooh, uh-huh. boy, I don't like it. No! Oh, my no. gosh. It, it was, was a 19, 19 and it bounced over to the one. Critical failure. Yeah. Uh, special edition Starfinder critical fumble deck from Paizo. <laughs> Echo 7's gravestone is going to just say he fans. believed in grenades. <laughs> <laughs> grenades are the worst. And I use them so infrequently that I forget how awful they are until I use one again. The DC is just too low they need to there, there needs to be a way to pump the dcs on them because i like using them to gain like status effects stunned staggered those kind of things but usually it's a reflex save and the monster's <sighs> reflex saves are just so good all the time so yeah. what you want to do drew let's use the cosmic crit deck because i ne- feel like i need to punish myself for my stupid stupid grenades <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a turn turn wasted there um all right, rolling another one up. Uh, range attack submitted by Rabbit. Oh, these are usually pretty nice and easy. Called probably Sprained It. As you fire your wrist servos and surveys, start spasming. Uh, okay, let's roll a. What does it say? Roll a d4. I'm going to roll that for surveys you. Surveys, too. Four. Uh, Oh no, you drop your weapon and suffer 1d6 damage. He can't drop this weapon. No, the, uh, I, this one uh, I can, can drop. The azimuth the, artillery? I thought the, it was shoulder mounted. The gellet is now, uh, the hail cannon is now. Oh, uh, on the shoulder. that's a It is in the ice uh, at your feet and four points of damage as you do damage to yourself. Oh no, Devasho, back to you. <laughs> Full attack. Oh, Tyler. Now, Wait. oh, do do I get damage for this thing standing next to you? Yes, you're going to take three points of fire damage. Okay. Are we seventh level? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. I have flashing strikes. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, factor those in. <laughs> Two All attacks. Right. I haven't done this yet. It uh, is flat footed and you're flanking. You can't get much better scenario. Yeah. So I'll only a minus three to these. First attack. 19 on the dice. Yes, let's go. Don't need any of these modifiers. 18 points of damage. It's still up and it's still dangerous. All right. All right. Here it comes. Here it comes. Hopefully the final acidic blow. Oh, 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 I I wanted to be. It wanted to be so bad, but it was close to a one. But the seven on the dice, I can tell you that it's going to be a miss. Oh, we're going to top of turn four. Sprouts, Marlo, uh, once again, staggered. Get a shot. Single shot with a plasma pist. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Oh, you got a f- full-on case of the, the zinnias right now. Four on the dice, same as her. The zips. Uh, the zips. Uh, okay. Back to its turn. This ice monster. You guys have invaded his territory. Uh, you did the most damage to it. I, don't know, I think we just got destroyed of show here, right? Two two attacks against the tank. Really? Yeah, well, it's going to take some damage, too. So you got that going for you. Slam, slam. We're going to kill our we're going to kill each other. Uh, Ten on the first one is going to be just a hit and 16 on the second two hits let's get a let's get a lot of damage going against you here well, i'm doing 4d6 of fire to you so oh, enjoy. I'm really low on the damage 41 it points of it doesn't matter. of damage with two I'm attacks it didn't matter it didn't, yay it, that was uh that uh that 11 was tyler's roll oh oh sorry so uh four more points uh but yes unconscious regardless now it it's taking 11 from these two hits. Yeah, it's right. taking 11 fire. 
So hopefully no, it's taken more more than that. More than that, yeah. More than, more than that. that. Does it Tyler? go down? Does it go down? No, it doesn't. It's still <laughs> down. <laughs> oh no! So close. I'm not even useful in death. <laughs> oh, oh boy, this is getting dire here. Uh, it is done with its turn. No flanking buddy for Trest. You are on your own. Uh, indeed. And we, d- we weren't able to get off a trick attack this time, were we? No longer flat-footed either. Yeah. Ooh, it's uh, dangerous. I need to think about a thing. Excuse me. That my is right. Right. Okay. I have my move. Wait, no, hang on a second. Nope. Nope. That reset. All right. I will make... You said this guy was looking pretty rough? Yes. And we've, we've forgotten once again. We I got yelled at the last time we had an elemental on here. Is, uh, forgot they are unflankable. Oh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> so right. it doesn't matter. Devosh is down. <laughs> <laughs> Our fans reminded us too last time. <laughs> Uh, it only mattered for one of the attacks, so I don't think it even mattered then. Uh, what 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 you want to do here? I'm just I'm gonna swing with my sword. Same thing I always do. <laughs> Try to murder things. Twenty nine to hit. Oh, that's a hit. Uh, for uh twenty points of damage. You see a massive breach in this thing's chest as your energy sword just kind of slides right through it, and you hear cracks from the ice underneath you, the ice inside this thing's body forming, and it explodes. You see little snowflakes and ice daggers falling all around this this icy crevasse as you dispel this thing back to whatever icy dimension it came from. And it uh, it's dead. And we're out of combat. Oh, boy. All right. Then he uh, is going to rush over to Devasho. <laughs> uh, do you have... You, you auto-stabilize, or you are able to auto-stabilize, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, because of the um, biohacker thing. Yep. Alrighty, so a stabilization, and uh, uh, we would go to Devasho's turn here. Do you want to uh, spend... RP to get back up, or do you want to see if your teammates can, can get you some healing? I can also help. Yeah, I'll let them help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, save the RP. Let's see. Um, do we want to try to medicine him first, or do we yeah. want to just go for a... Yeah, can I try that? Yeah. Let us all hold hands. <laughs> oh, so, my. five on medicine check. <laughs> Oh, okay, so that is the 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 good full heal that you hear so much about. So you're gonna in um, add your uh, for the three deadly wounds your intelligence, right? Yeah, intelligence. Yeah, which bonus. is a yeah. six mod. Pretty good. So thirteen points yield back. Cool. And you're back up on your feet, Devasho, after tanking hundreds of points of damage. It sounds like. <laughs> From this uh, big yeah, bruiser, I mean, uh, Sprouts needs needs rest. <laughs> I think we all um, need a rest at this point. <laughs> yeah, how, how much uh, how much hit points are you still down there, Devasho? Numerically, I'm at thirteen of fifty seven. Ah, okay. So I might be giving you a full uh, three here. Let me just see. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a level three heal. I would greatly appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Mystic cure level three. That'll be. A 5d8, so that'll be, or 5d8 plus my wisdom, so that'll be uh, 35 hit points. Thank you. Are, are we taking a 10 for everybody else? Oh, really? I uh, need yeah. one very much. I'm going to take one as well. <laughs> so- it doesn't uh, seem like anything else is here in this entire crevasse. It seems like this guardian of the ice is what was cleaning the and polishing the the ice beneath and, and keeping away perhaps other worse things. So while everybody is resting, I would like to spend that 10 minutes um, attuning my camouflage membrane that I've forgotten about for, oh. you know, two books. <laughs> you're, just, you're just rubbing snow and ice on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that will, will, will work and give you a nice little bonus in this setting, this icy setting. Yeah, it ought to be pretty easy to camouflage myself against 
an ice comet that you know seems to look the same everywhere. So yeah, you just make it white, white blues. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe the grays of the 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 gray and black of the the rock as well. That should be pretty awesome camo. Um, right. So does anyone else need healing? Healing HP healing, or are we just burning some RP? Uh, it's bringing RP. That yeah, sounds like it's just some some RP okay. at this point. Yeah, this thing. Oh. Uh, Wait, Patrick, am I still taking half from Divine Healing? Uh, yes. Oh no, I'm sorry. I, I would have. I, I specifically took uh, Necromantic Revitalization for him. So, I think we talked about those. Any healing was was halved. Um, even things that are specifically for undead. I think so, mainly because this curse this is, a, is... This is a shadow corruption thing. Yeah, it's, this isn't it's a, a, an undead thing. It's just poopy. So well, you, that's a worthless spell. <laughs> you still down some HP then? Uh, Yeah, so he did. I forgot to recalculate. So technically, I can craft healing serums that will work on Devasho because my healing serums as a biohacker are not magical. It's, yeah. So when, right? I think... I mean, it, you would still get it half. Yeah, it's all healing. It's all healing. It's all healing. It doesn't all matter healing. if it's magical or yeah. otherwise. I, okay. It it has made me the most worthless tank ever because <laughs> well, t- I'm Tyler, you're to heal. you're now choosing not to use the benefits, the dark benefits of your your evil moats. So that's on you. Well, you could have been yeah, because I was I was kind of hoping that and- I was kind of hoping if it was one of those things that if I didn't indulge them, it w- I would like get cured or something i don't know i don't know how this works so uh you need some kind of mystic guide to to bring you through and if only there was someone like that written into this ap that we're going to meet at some point in the future but not now 13 plus 35 divided by two you do the math while uh you guys rest up take this 10 minutes here uh continuing on do you want to make me another survival check sprouts marlow Sure. City boy. Oh, it was it was on that 19. Oh, oh no. no. Uh, uh book reroll if you want it. Uh, book four, book reroll. Not saying that this is important at all, but uh Can other people roll survival or no? Yeah. Uh, you know he's he's done so bad. I would say yes, but uh that means you will not be able to aid. Um um, uh, I guess, I guess uh, no, uh, Tress, you can aid, right? You, you just don't auto aid. Uh, I have a plus 13. Is it yeah, zero? Tress is the best. Well, yeah, well, why don't you give me, seven. why don't you give me a roll, Trest? Okay. You can technically still beat it out. Oh, 31. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, the DC for this round, if you can get aided, is 31. So, for a, Becca, what does Zinnia have for? A plus seven. I can try to aid. Go ahead and roll it. Just don't roll one or a two. Oh, I did it. DC 31 here. Go team, go. Uh, We'll allow you to to realize that Sprouts is leading you in the wrong direction and uh, move on in a more kind of um, cattywampus direction. (laughs) Uh, Figuratively and literally as you... um, maybe backtrack a little bit and like move beyond some of the more rocky ranges and get to an area here um, where there is a, a stony overhang of some of these these comet rocks uh, and at the end of it a nearly unnoticeable small path cut through the snow here where several rocks are piled around what looks like a a white hatch almost perfectly blending in with the surrounding snowy terrain. Uh, The round portal is about 10 feet across and decorated with the faint outline of an insectile face crowned by three shining stars. This does indeed seem to be a home brewed, you know, uh, a crafted handcrafted entrance are, into there, the rock are there numbers carved on the front of this hatch? No numbers. Um, they match the ones on my lottery ticket. <sighs> like I said, uh, faint, faint outline of an insectal f- face. Uh, Let's open it. Yeah, to recognize uh, Hylax imagery. 
It definitely definitely seems perhaps some insect, maybe not necessarily a, a normal um, Hylaxian one. Uh, Is there a latch on the hatch? Definitely bug-like. Uh, Ooh, we could, could call it a hatch latch. Uh, attached hatch card reader. Um, an, an attached hatch latch. So well, no, there's not, no latch, but the card reader is attached. If you can hack, you can use computers or you can try engineering, but this is a locked hatch. Perhaps someone could use computers to patch. We have to hack the hatch. Hatch latch. Latch. Uh, is there a benefit to using engineering or computers? Like no. one or the other? No, not in particular. I get a plus four to engineering to disable a lock. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think this is a card reader you're you're trying to hack here, and not necessarily a. a lock. I also get a plus four to computers to hack a door. Does this count as a door? Uh, no, it's a hatch. I think we've very well established that. <laughs> uh, no, the engineering check would be to kind of like uh, express the servos and try and get them to to uh, have it triggered that the electrical signal went to them. So um, I will say it's a DC twenty five either way. If you want to give me a okay. roll, we'll see where we're going. All right. So this is going to be a 34 oh. to hack the door. Nice. Uh, as you open it up there, uh, three large figures stand in what looks like a, a small hallway. Uh, one of them kind of like sharpening, uh, clanging on a metal weapon. The other two maybe hunched over a small table and this is what they look like. And you Whoa! Perhaps recognize the insectile face in front of you. As Good man's. One of the two hunched over this small table uh, stands up on insectoid legs. It's got a, uh, a almost spider-like body that kind of crawls up in your direction and, and screeches out. Ah, tender. Next time. Dum, oh, bum, boy. Bum. oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I don't want to get in another fight. I'm so sick of fights this week. <laughs> I'm just dying left and right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good times here on Cosmic Red, everybody. I'll tell you what. Um, oh, this is this is a rough comment. I made it a little bit rougher for you all. But uh, the DC to find this hatch like immediately. Uh, like as soon as you step out of the church, DC fifty, <laughs> and then Good the, Lord. it goes wow. down a bit every time you okay. spend like an hour searching, and we have one of these little random encounters. But oh, uh, so we were never going to get that. <laughs> I, I I'd be very interested if someone had like a full survivalist build <laughs> at level seven and was like uh, for this one moment, boom! They still, I hit it. They still don't have a plus thirty. <laughs> Yeah, not no, not getting it done probably immediately. But you guys did it pretty darn quickly. And we are moving on next week to what lies below the surface, perhaps here. Until then, uh, guys, thanks so much for playing with me. Thank, Thank you, Patrick. you, Patrick. Listeners, thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time on Cosmic Grit. Have Good a night. great week. Good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Cosmic Crit. This episode has been made possible through a sponsorship with Roll20, and the backing of our Critamander fans on Patreon. Thanks again and have a great week.